Hello, and welcome to the Homeschooling and Loving It podcast. I'm your host, Jamie, your friend at homeschool.com and homeschool mom of six. Join us as we keep it real and chat about the ups and downs of this amazing adventure we call the homeschool life. So grab a cup of your warm favorite and a comfy chair and let's get started. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to homeschool.com's Homeschooling and Loving It podcast. We're on episode 39, and today we're talking about togetherness. As most of the world has experienced more family togetherness in the last few months than we have ever before, this, of course, we could say is a good thing. But then again, sometimes it brings up challenges. And so here today to talk with us about what we can do when those challenges arise and what we can do about togetherness is my friend Celeste Orr. Hi Celeste. Hi, thank you so much for having me Jamie. Oh, I'm thrilled to finally get to meet you sort of in person. We've sort of chatted and and messaged each other for quite some time now, but this is our first actual conversation and I'm so excited about it. But today Celeste is joining us from Maine. And Celeste is also the author of a recently published book called Togetherness Redefined. And if you'd like to connect with Celeste, you can find her at togethernessredefined.com. And so she is here today to talk with us about her her area of expertise, which is this idea of togetherness. Thank you. I I can't wait because togetherness is something that has really been on my heart for a really long time. So I'm so excited that I get to talk about it. Yes, and we look forward to it. But before we dive into the topic, just something I like to ask uh, the homeschool mamas that I interview. As a homeschool mama myself and a work at home mama, I like to know about your story, how you got started, how you um, stepped out on this life calling, so to speak. So if you could share with us about that, I think that would be wonderful. Sure. Yeah. Well, my story starts, I think, um, when I got pregnant with my first baby back in 2000. 2005 um, and I had a neighbor who homeschooled her children and she had seven children and I just loved the fa- their family I loved the way that they worked together um, I would go over to their house because she was coaching me on some new mama kind of things and I was kind of scared I didn't have my mom close by um, so she was teaching me about breastfeeding and about natural childbirth and those kinds of things. And I would go over and see her children learning and talking together all day long. And I'd never experienced something like that, but immediately I wanted it. (laughs) And um, so I decided to stay home with my baby, which wasn't a popular decision at that time. Um, But I just had to do it. Something inside of me was really calling me to do that. And it was the best decision that I made. Um, Fast forward a few years and we had another child. Uh, We were living in overseas in Sydney, Australia at the time. And when we moved home and my oldest got to school age, it was evident that he wasn't going to be able to sit in a desk for any length of time. He was a very energetic child. And I could just look forward and see those parent teacher meetings that I really didn't want to have. And I said, okay, we're just going to try homeschooling one year. Um, The rest is history. Here we are 11 years later and I'm loving it. (laughs) Yeah. So much so that you've actually started a website and written a book. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. I, I, kept getting a lot of questions. Um, Homeschooling allowed us to travel full time as a family uh, Mm -hmm. for seven years. We just stepped off of that full time travel journey, Um, but it allowed us to do that. And so I started getting a lot of questions from people wanting to know, you know, how did that happen for you? And Mm -hmm. so I decided I was like, I can't, you know, it's really not a secret. I've got to organize these things. And I'm so glad I did. I've been able to meet some really amazing mamas because of it. Yes, absolutely. And I've gotten to meet you and I'm thrilled about that. But this leads us to our topic today, togetherness. And 
you know, this is something that, you know, prior to 2020, we may not have had this amount of <laughs> togetherness that we're experiencing uh, due to the quarantine, due to isolating ourselves, um, social distancing, all of the all of the many things that we're experiencing this year. And so even speaking for myself in my own home, um, I feel like the days just really feel long and sometimes uh, monotonous. You know, I, I'm, I'm finding myself forgetting the day of the week. <laughs> it is, or, you know, what in the world is today? But um, all of that kind of is, is part and parcel of, of the situation that we're in. Uh, right now during this pandemic and, and the time that we're in. But I feel like there are some challenges that are arising because of this amount of togetherness that we have and even kind of snippy with each other. And do you, do, have, you, have you found that to be kind of common? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I think we all do for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And there's some things that we need to do that we've never done before probably because mm -hmm. of that. We don't want our relationships to suffer. Absolutely. Right, right. So um, I feel like there can be too much togetherness to some degree. And so, um, but even saying that, I kind of feel guilty, you know, because I'm mom. I'm supposed to want to be with my children and want, you know, not saying that I don't want to be, but just even saying that they kind of get on my nerves sometimes or that, you know, I just need a break. I need to be alone. It makes me feel just a little tinge of guilt. Um, but it's human to feel that, isn't it? For sure. Yes, absolutely. We all need to be alone sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, I want to really give you a good space of time. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hush here and I want you to share with us um, just your thoughts on this and, and the whole too much togetherness and, you know, is it, is, it, is it possible to have too much of it? And even some practical pointers or tips um, to help us where we're at today as mamas and daddies. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Thank you, Jamie. Um, you know, I've gotten this question from a couple of different places because, and some of them are very lighthearted, you know, but all of, the, all of us deal with mama guilt. You know, even if we weren't dealing with a pandemic, I think mama guilt is something that we have to continually uh, reject, you know, and say, um, there are things that we need personally, and we have to you know, get those or our family togetherness will suffer if we don't. So I would say my, my standard answer is there's not a such thing as too much togetherness. Like that's my favorite answer to give mm -hmm. because I believe that every family can really redefine togetherness. So when we feel like it's too much, we're getting snippy. We are, you know, the days are getting too long. I think that we can do a little bit of planning and also a little bit of forethought um, to just redefine what we're doing and maybe change some things up. So it, it sounds more complicated though than it really is. And I will just say like, even saying that, we have to get away from our kids to actually do that planning. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> you know, absolutely. <laughs> and and my go to is like coffee shops on a Saturday morning. Everybody's sleeping in till ten because my kids are teenagers now, and mm -hmm. I'm at the coffee shop from seven to ten. Three hours of peacefulness, you know. But right now, that's not an, an option that's open to me. So I have to create my own, you know, alone space and alone time. So I will say that, um, yeah, I do have a couple of, of practical tips and I'm, I'm happy to give those. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> the first thing I'll say is that we really do have to think about our, um, our intentions for homeschooling, for our family life. And one of mine is relationship over academics. So academics are so important in my house. I, um, I want to raise lifelong learners, you know, kids who really want to go to college, who want to get a career that they're excited about and want to keep learning. But at the end of the day, if someone is so upset over math that I find myself raising my voice and I see tears in their eyes, I know we need to shift. 
you know, because our relationship is more important than finishing a math lesson or, um, you know, doing writing in the way that I think writing needs to be done that day. So overall, that's my number one thing, relationship over academics, because kids are going to learn, but our relationships are not going to build themselves. So that, yeah, and when we remember that, you know, a lot of those stressful things kind of take care of themselves. Yeah. So in my house, we need to get outside every single day. <laughs> and I am working on, you know, we just moved to Maine. We, we traveled around, we settled down in a place that has harsh winters. So I'm trying to get myself some resource about, you know, how do you get outside when it's cold, snowy, rainy, cloud, cloudy? Um, and there's some wisdom out there. So, so I'm, I'm working on that, but I will say like, that's the reset for us. You know, math is too hard. Writing's too hard. No one is listening to science or history today. Well, we're going to go outside for a few hours, see what happens. Um, and then I just kind of like go away from my kids while we're out there, you know, <laughs> I get some alone time that way. Um, so that would be my first tip, you know, prioritizing that relationship and doing what you need to do to make that a priority. Um, the next thing would be that in our homeschool, we prioritize reading over everything else. So you probably know that when you plan a homeschool day, you have just planned something that probably will not come to fruition, right? They, they all change. <laughs> and when I am throwing things out the window for a day or putting them on the back burner, I try to make sure that that's not reading. Um, so in my house, everyone loves to connect over good books, and we have really gathered a lot of strength from the Read Aloud Revival group, um, Sarah McKenzie and her book, The Read Aloud Family, and it has really inspired us to, you know, take those subjects like history or science and turn them into a read aloud, because that's what my kids really enjoy. Um, so that would be my second tip. And also, you know, as moms, we need to know what fuels us, like what excites us and reading with my kids. And especially as teenagers, I will say, you know, when they were little, it was so fun. Um, and I thought that as they got to read by themselves, that we wouldn't get to do that anymore. And I mm -hmm. grieved that for a few months. And then I realized, well, how are we going to learn? You know, um, I happen to have kids who don't, love online learning a whole lot. Um, so we minimize that and we do use it because, hey, it's 2020, you know, and um, we've got to do some online stuff with teenagers, I think. Um, but we really, really love reading aloud and I love it. So yeah, that we, I get what I need in that way. Um, and the next thing I would say is that I really prioritize curiosity over standards. Um, so in our homeschool and also, you know, in our family, when we think something needs to be a certain way, then if it is killing our curiosity and our spark for adventure and spark for life, I try to just shift that and find what we're curious about. So hopefully that makes sense for people. Um, and then, you know, the other thing is I like to keep a couple of magic things in my back pocket. <laughs> so <laughs> there are some days where everything goes awry, you know, like you've made as many adjustments as you can and no one is learning. Um, I've heard some of my friends call it like you're throwing marshmallows at someone's head and they're trying to eat, you know, and you're like, why can't you, uh, you know, I, you can't learn anything because your mind is shut off. So when that happens, um, my go-to is to pull out a board game or a card game or a learning game or just put on Audible because sometimes I don't have anything left to give, you know. Yeah. Um, I've depleted myself. My kids are depleted, but they need me and they need something, you know, um, mm -hmm. I really thought that the hard years were going to be when my kids were little, you know, because they need you every second and you have to watch them that they don't like run away into the street or, you know, fall off of something. But I'm finding that having teenagers, they need us too. And, um, 
especially with the pandemic and we're all together, if we're all just working in our separate places, or even if we're in the same room, but our minds are somewhere else, I try to, you know, recognize when that happens because it needs to happen sometimes, you know, um, but I try to bring it back and say, okay, it's time for us to play a game together, or it's time for us to put on our book and then talk about it afterwards. So with those strategies in mind, I find that things get a lot easier when togetherness um, is happening more than we planned or more than we <laughs> wanted. <laughs> and the last thing that I love to tell people is um, to simplify. So mm -hmm. I know there are a lot of new homeschoolers out there and they are some, some of us homeschool mamas, no matter how long we've been homeschooling, we tend to overwhelm ourselves and to make things more complicated than it has to be. Mm -hmm. So um, I read Simplicity Parenting by Kim Jong Payne this summer, no, last fall, actually a year ago. And it really helped me feel so much better about the way that we um, homeschool and the way that we live our life is, you know, the simpler, the better. So if something seems too hard, the first question I try to ask is, have I simplified it, you know, all the way that it can be. And, um, you know, that's where that going outside really helps. So, um, yeah, th those are my tips for really making sure that you are, I guess, being intentional, you know, about your time right. with togetherness. And at the end of the day, um, something that I always tell the moms that that I help over at Togetherness Redefined is you've got to know when you need to be alone. Because if you don't, <laughs> then togetherness is going to become a dirty word. You know, <laughs> no one's going to want to be with you if you haven't taken the time to really invest in yourself, to give yourself what you really need. And when you are feeling that strain and you realize you need to be alone, everyone else is feeling it too. So just go ahead and take some time. Good stuff. I really appreciate this and loved what you said about relationship over anything else really academics whatever it may be i think that's really core to what we're doing you know we've we're first of all parents and you know secondly we're homeschoolers and i think both of those those aspects of what we do every single day if we don't have that relationship part of it you know that's that's the most important thing yeah <laughs> You know, so we teach them academics, but we lose their, lose that relationship by being harsh or by being, you know, unbending or unflexible. Yeah, such a good reminder. I've, I have to remind myself of that a lot. Um, you had so many good things to say. I was trying to take notes. <laughs> but, Thank oh, you. the reading, the reading stuff. Oh, what you said about that, so true. I agree wholeheartedly. Of course, I have six. I have six children, two of which I'm still homeschooling. The others have graduated from our homeschool. But I thought that the whole read aloud scene would be, you know, just kind of something we would pass through as they got into teenage years. And really discovered this year that they enjoy me reading aloud to them. Still. Yeah something that I am surprised about, but I'm loving. Me too. I, I, you know, I got so sad when I felt like I had to give it up because my kids, mm -hmm. you know, they grew out of bedtime stories. Oh yeah. And that was a lot of our read aloud time, you know, um, and I was really struggling. And so um, when I read the read aloud family and, you know, in that book, I'm not sure if you read it, Sarah McKenzie talks about the research behind reading aloud and and how it really does fill in the gaps that we have in our homeschool you know so my family happens to be a desire led learning type of family um we traveled around for seven years because we were going to national parks in the united states and we were learning through junior ranger programs we were meeting people you know we were doing all of that wild outdoor nature kind of thing and we still do that so we settled down um in near acadia national park and that's because we can still have adventure you know and spread out a little bit <laughs> oh but, absolutely i, I mean, love to see yeah. <laughs> 
thank amazing. you thank you it has um yeah it's it's amazing and beautiful here but i will mm -hmm. say that you know with interest-led homeschooling there are going to be gaps you know there are going to be things that our my kids mm -hmm. are going to get to college and they're going to say well my mom you know she didn't teach me a whole lot about that or i've never learned that particular part of whatever it is mm -hmm. um and the research you know shows that kids who have been read to and kids who read aloud with their family they they make up those gaps really quickly you know and they keep learning their whole life long so that really excites me and and it gives me some peace about those things that i haven't gotten right yep absolutely and so what kind of read alouds do you use with your teen boys yeah so i actually have two kids who love to choose their own books so i when i try to assign a book it really doesn't go well <laughs> you know <laughs> i have to offer it as a suggestion because um they are voracious readers and so they're always reading things and actually they're the ones who recommend our fiction titles to us so we try to find like a really good needy series um we just finished the mysterious benedict society which was so fun because my oldest had already read it several years ago you know but he was offering it as a suggestion for his brother um and what happened was as we were listening to it we discovered books in the series that he hadn't gotten to or you know he had moved on to something else and we were able to you know really dig into that for months because those books are long and um, they have mind puzzles in them and they're so fun so that's the way we do fiction basically he's our resident expert and he recommends things that our whole family would enjoy and I love it when their dad gets into it too like that makes it so much fun um, yes. when he wants to hang around and listen to the book but as far as nonfiction goes those I tend to choose those um, and mm -hmm. I use audible a lot because it gives me a break um, it allows me to uh, you know I have a I have a, a working job for a nonprofit and I also have a writing job that I do so it allows me a little bit of flexibility there to, to mm -hmm. multitask sometimes when I have to and then it also allows us time to like pour a pot of tea and sit around and just enjoy being together and listening to something. And the kids do art. That's when they dig out those complicated art projects that I don't, you know, I'm not an artsy person. So um, they do that while we listen. And I just choose nonfiction titles that go along with what we're studying. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this year it's early American literature and um, history. And then we're trying to do a little bit of physics um, for science. So I choose something. Um, last year we, we were living on a boat. So we were studying some pirate history and Florida history. And we, um, we found these really amazing books on Audible that were written by treasure hunters, real life treasure hunters that had yeah. done deep sea exploration in the places that we were living last winter. So, um, you know, just stories like that, there are a million things out there to do. And I love how that ties in with, you know, having the surprise in your pocket. <laughs> It not only gives you a break, but it gives the kids a break and it's relaxing. And like you said, the art, you can pull art out. Oh, I love doing that. Now I'm, I'm the opposite. I'm a little more artsy than my kids. Um, yeah. but I love it when they, when I discover them pull out the, the paints or last week, my, one of my daughters was macrameing. <laughs> so <laughs> that's always exciting to see them yeah. do that on their own. <laughs> But yes, and simplify. I think that's something that really has been on my heart this year. Um, and what I've been trying to encourage these new homeschool mamas, like you mentioned, is that keep it simple. It doesn't have to be super complicated. And, you know, because sometimes as a new homeschooler, we have that mindset that we have to be just like the school or just yeah. Uh, you know, a regular teacher's classroom and, you know, the full, the full works. And that's not the case and really can kill and rob the joy of learning from ourselves and our children. So yeah, reminder, I appreciate it. Well, as we wrap up this podcast, Celeste, do you have any final words of encouragement for our listeners? 
Yes, I will say, you know, encouraging moms is really, it has become one of my biggest passions in life. And I believe it's part of my calling. Um, you know, as I was going along as a mom and, and continue to, I, I'm kind of wondering, like, why am I doing all of these weird and crazy things? You know, <laughs> um, I mean, we, we moved across the world, we moved back again, we traveled around, we lived in 200 square feet for seven years. Uh, you know, I mean, we've moved um, countless times. And I kept wondering, you know, what is it? And the whole time I came up with, you know, I've really been chasing togetherness. I really have been trying to escape the ruts that my family would get in, you know, that would really be taxing on our relationships. And what I discovered was you don't have to do all those crazy things to find togetherness with your family. And so once I came to that realization, I really have been trying to get in touch with as many mamas as possible and say, you know, you have everything you need to have the big family dreams that are in your heart. Mm -hmm. The relationships that you want with your family, they're already there, you know, and I love connecting with people at togethernessredefined.com to give them that message and say, you know, some, sometimes we do need help. We need to invest in ourselves with good books and, you know, online programs is something that I've found recently that really helped me be a better mama, be the mama that I want to be. Um, mm -hmm. But every single mom already has that there. And sometimes we need a little help bringing it out. But I never want anyone to be discouraged, you know, or to wake up and feel like they have too much on them and they can't be the person that they were created to be. So that would be, you know, if someone's listening to this podcast and they've become somehow overwhelmed, you know, with, oh my goodness, what, how am I supposed to remember all this stuff? I would say at the end of the day, remember that you have everything you need to do whatever you're supposed to do. And there's so many of us out here cheering you on. And I'm happy to be a part of that. Yes, I love it. Well, Celeste, it has been such a pleasure to get to know you, to meet you, sort of in person, <laughs> you too. talk about this subject today. And I feel encouraged already, you know, as I mentioned, kind of feeling that stress of being together so much. But, you know, even while you were talking about living together in, what did you, what did you say, 200 square feet? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't complain about hard too much togetherness. <laughs> Well, I will say our our backyard was gigantic, right? Well, I mean, we, yeah. we got to park wherever we wanted in good weather year round. So we just went outside. <laughs> Absolutely. But we all appreciate your encouragement and insight and these practical tips and good reminders. And so I wish you the best as you encourage mamas in this togetherness redefined. Also for our listeners, Celeste does regular togetherness tips. And so yes. that's an email, isn't it, that you send out? It is. Every single Friday morning, um, you know, barring any tragedies or whatever may happen, I send a togetherness tip to my email group. And, you know, that has been so much fun because I get responses back about um, what's going on in other people's lives. Mm -hmm. And it really helps me know, you know, how to... Um, help mamas, but those are just little stories and they come into your email inbox every Friday morning. So if you want to join, it's it's there at togethernessredefined.com forward slash subscribe. Great. Thank you. And thank you for joining us today, Celeste. Yes. Thank you so much for having me, Jamie. I'd like to also mention our sponsor, Time for Learning. We thank Time for Learning for helping make this podcast possible. I've used Time for Learning in my homeschool for years because it's an all-in-one solution that offers parents tools like reporting and grading, engaging lessons for the kids, and even access 24-7. And basically, if you have access to the internet, you can use this curriculum. So this month, we have a special offer for the Loving It Pod family. First-time users can get their second month free with promo code HSLI. That's H. S-L-I. I want to thank our listeners for tuning in this week. You are the reason why we are here, and we are dedicated to helping you find inspiration for your homeschool journey. 
If you have any suggestions for our podcast, please feel free to email me at jamie.gaddy at homeschool.com. And don't forget to join us on Thursdays for our newest podcast, where we talk about homeschooling and parenthood. Wishing you the best as we homeschool together. Until next time, with grace and joy, Jamie.